I believe there's a difference between credit, giving somebody credit, and the person necessarily having credibility. People who don't um, agree with me can be very conspicuous in the way that they go about abridging my rights and the dignities of uh, a student. I'm 61 years old, but I'm deaf. I, I didn't get a chance to learn things the way other people get a chance to learn things. And it's against the law for the military to use to draft a deaf person, much less into a secret illegal war game fight club the way they have. So I don't have a lot of respect for the people who claim I don't deserve credit for um, submitting my affidavits to the public in defiance of terroristic um, threats and actual violent, terrible reprisals towards people who I love and to my person. And um, it's, it's all clearly the U.S. government doing it because I've reported it to Homeland Security, to Congress, to police. And nobody's even said they were sorry except the mayor of Pittsburgh. So um, I realized I got hardwired into the bullying system. You know, Yoko and O cackles over the hybrid zania about telling North Korea what I say and so forth and so on and all that. But... You know, if I was a professional and I had a grid, I would work very carefully and systematically on my presentation of this problem. But what I am is just a section a deaf person dealing with a very competent um, tenant building manager who doesn't like me very much and then a number of disabled people who I'm affectionate about. I mean, admittedly, I'm a little bit embarrassed by the way that my talk collides a little bit with the atmosphere that is going at Tassad. But they're very protective of me and friendly towards me as I am towards them. And, um, I live in a dream world, people like to say, where I don't own any weapons, but it's not delusional or naive. I was kidnapped and tortured as a child. I know what it feels like. You know, it's not it's not a pretty picture when somebody drives by real slow with a Hollywood um, uh, hazing atmosphere towards me. But, you know, people who say I have no credibility or afraid of being upstage are like dishwashers laughing at, I mean, waiters laughing at a dishwasher. Now, of course, they don't want to admit that I was mentally challenged because people wanted to dislocate me psychologically. And so they say I'm playing all big or grandstanding and so on. So let me walk you through some of the particulars of what is real and what really happened. For example, I was arrested and put in an office about 10 years ago after being banned from school. Now, the specific reason was that I had a note that I came across that was very old, and I you know, skipped it to a friend who was in... Um, management of the clubhouse to get a laugh out of him to discuss it for you know how it came about and anger management and he misconstrued it probably under pressure from supervisors and i was locked up let me tell you it was a note that you know was just sort of a vocal pittsburgh style you know, I'll break every bone in your face, I think is what it said. We just pound up energy. I mean, even if you said that in Pittsburgh, nobody's going to, people would just, yeah, right. So um, what caused it was that they were threatening to um, um, kill somebody. And I tried to warn the school that there was a gang, a union, Teamsters or something. I don't know who they are exactly, Green Party, whatever. 
who were threatening to kill somebody. You know, this, I don't remember whether it was before the Blue House or after the Blue House, but it was before they knifed Shannon outside the clubhouse to death. And naturally, I was very, very angry that they hadn't listened to me and tried. They seemed to actually advocate, they knew that it was going to go on. And they were advocating for the, for the, for the deranged act. And, um, you know, this was before I got poisoned in the mouth by this hostile weirdness from Seattle administration, you know, playing a game of, you know, let the percolator boil on the queer bait, as they would call me. And, um, some guy came up from the federal building named Barry, which is the namesake of Barack Obama, and slammed me in the face deliberately. He could have broken my glasses. So it was all of this evil from administration. It was unprovoked. Terrible, terrible sadism. And one of these characters has evidently been in school with the man who married the woman I had once loved. You know, so they had me cornered and isolated and deaf in a box. I mean, it's erroneous to misconstrue it as a clear and active threat. What had happened was that I had typed it out to myself because it played through my psyche. And I thought, ha ha, I've caught a picture of what they're after and I put it away. And sandals started showing up outside my door in the hall of the joint I was living in, you know, because they only give you sandals in novice. Because the licky chops would get... The woman who came to my door was licky chops with glee that, that they had pulled it off, you know. And it, the court didn't say, would you like to defend yourself? I would have said, oh, and I wanted some anger management. I come across that note the computer you know but he's an honest person he apologized to me the mayor of pittsburgh apologized to me this is some of the coordinating maneuvers of the psychopath guild who tortured me and were too embarrassed administratively to even acknowledge that it had happened much less show any courage whatsoever about it i mean it, 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 it i find that irritating to see stuffed shirts complaining about Arredondo when not one of the people who fired Arredondo, as much as I loathe what happened in Uvalde, was has behaved any better in analogous system positions. Now, they claimed I was genetically schizophrenic. Well, some people started to dismiss that, but they insist I was schizophrenic. The reason, get this, the reason they dismissed that I was genetically schizophrenic was because I have a neurotrauma. Okay, so that doesn't trace back, but I'm still schizophrenic, even though they admit I have a neurotrauma, causing me terrible suffering it's a brain injury that was inflicted on me deliberately to keep me out so they can embarrass liberals you, you get the picture you know the, so you know they and 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 they set up peep okay and while they set up peep we start getting a plague going it's right I said, so what they're going to do is mandatory testing right and they get licky chop peep, it's justified. And then they have this stuff, Donna, who appears on my father's um, death record. While these people were setting up taunts and setting up Mount Desert Island and talking about a scheme to transform the human race by injecting the blood and so on. Surrounding my name with positive negative signs. And then calling themselves the JDL while advocating for Joseph Goebbels. This is the truth. I mean, I've talked about it in other videos. And yet I am, have no credibility, they say. So, and they give me these notes and say things like, I think you know what you're we're saying. After clocking out sort of a you know, conveyance. So, you know, Peter Gabriel on Flippy Tune had this big cerebral thing going about lines in the sand in Iraq because the queer bait was moaning about being unrequited from the 
Jewish glory to Leslie Katz, you know. So you have this situation where everybody's saying, oh, he wants to put it in, you know, Putin for Putin, the commie, you know, wants some leaky tops to set up their peak. And I was just saying, you know, however hysterical I became and however residually traumatized from the move and the rejection, I deserve some credit because I showed fairly admirable restraint with this lady, in my personal opinion. I mean, they say, okay, we were passionate, making out, and a lot of people were telling me she's just coy. She needs, and she. we were out in the woods. She was completely naked. She was even fell asleep for a while. And I did nothing to violate her in circumstances like that, nothing. And she rejected me, okay, and they made out that the rejection was because I didn't. And I said that I was entitled to some credit. Okay. So when Rosa broke up with me, I was in a pre-seizure condition, but I didn't. I said, you're, you're entitled to leave. My sister tells me, and I've seen in the mentally ill clusters, that some people, women will take up for a man who's um, unstable and try to work with them. My sister says it happens all the time. In my case, it didn't work that way. They wanted to have fun with the neuroplasm that they evidently had all known was in there and knew that I didn't. That Pittsburgh was being having too much malicious glee. Watching it, you know, me defend my, no, were you taking drugs? The girls would say to me and stuff like this. You know, and denying clear, I mean, Ken Crimson insulted the intelligence of every man, woman, and child on earth. This clear, disturbing evidence of torture. And they were working with a psychiatrist from Attica State Prison. I mean, this guy makes tons of money. His children torture me, and they make tons of money. I mean, they are in charge of the whole show. They're in charge of the whole show. Seattle will back them up to the point we're saying, and they, get this. Seattle stocks, the UW dialectical evil mercenaries behind this whole claim that I don't deserve any credit because I don't have any credibility. Now, I'm willing to hedge on credibility because I am deaf and I didn't learn things I needed to know. But credit, listen to this. They go into every single detail. The crowd cag register coronary has every single detail to this second recorded in her swindle and her slave operation that she tagged me for. Bucky you say, I don't even know, because they knew my father didn't know what was going on. He didn't know that I was kidnapped and tortured. I was too frightened of these people. What would happen to my father if I told him? What would happen to me? My mother, if we stayed, we just moved. And that seemed like the answer. Everybody was telling me, you're nothing. You're insignificant. Just forget about it. They did it because we hate you and I believe them. They did, you know, so. But every single detail of what they did boils down to this kind of um, execution of, of a double cross that Croc Agrius de Corona records as a licky top squirm from the sadistic troop who see millions of dollars in failure to warrant. That's what they're selling, but they never told anybody what was going on. So you have these Lakey Chops coins, and they record every single detail. So they knew that it was an old note that I never sold anybody. They knew that I was at home. They knew I was home just like this the day that I sent it to, to Owen. I was in no immediate danger to these people. I was not running, oh, I'm going to hit you with a stick outside the clubhouse. None of this was true. I was. They knew that it was a note that I had put away and come across and thought, I'll show Owen so we can figure out what, what to do about the frustration and horror of being ignored and then seeing a violent crime and then being abused by the people who committed the violent crime and ignored me. I'm in sickening horror of being under the administrative auspices of sound mental health. Okay. 
but I trusted him, and I still trust him. And I, I showed it to him. Right? And they knew because they cyber tamper everything. They stalk every. When people say, "Oh, we just ignore queer bait," the opposite is true. They're obsessive about it. So they knew that, and yet they pounced anyway. They pounced like I had just come out and woke up out of the trance. I'm going to go break everybody in Owen Riley's face. I mean, it, a ridiculous claim that's totally untrue. Owen just simply didn't know what to make of it, and he was under tremendous pressure from the supervisory staff. The minute you see Curry snap, we want you to help us get Licky Chops Glee for the car cab of Gutsu Corona because she has these these uh, tapes in her safe that she wants to, to, to sell to the public. You know, she has a nine-year-old thing of Michael Reagan's favorite thing that she wants to, you know, make sure they get to sell. And the, and the tunnel was Rudy Giuliani, you know, scampering around like a mad hatter with his briefcase of Mula Rula Cacadula. And Owen was just um, responding in the way that he could defend his job, you know, and I, maybe I would have had a lawsuit if he had gone down to the details. Like, did you call him at home and ask him, is this directed at me? I mean, you've known me for a long time. I just told him, just forget about it. I understand what happened. I trusted you. I made a mistake. We'll, we'll be friends. I still trust him. I made a mistake. He made a mistake. There's no big deal. But what these criminals in the administration did was so duplicitous and hypocritical that I really think I deserve credit that I never did really hurt anybody, defend myself or, or flip out, you know, because they tortured me and they murdered people and they bashed me. And I just calmly took it. And when I went home in meditation, I caught the vibe of the explosive anger and disappointment. And I captured it and put it into relief. Came across it later, and I thought I'll, I'll show this to Owen. He'll give me a hand with it. We'll figure some out in terms of anger management, you know. But I'm dealing with the criminally insane. I'm dealing with the criminally insane. They follow my letters around. They follow my money around. The hopping hell things, and they think they think that what they're doing is some sort of like. Um, um, I don't, how can they believe in themselves in any way, shape, or form? You know, I, I don't understand how they can believe in themselves in any way, shape, or form. Doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't play out as credible. And they're, yet they're denying me not just credit, but, I mean, not just credibility, but credit for anything, you know, because they, they don't dare admit any of it. Yeah. So what I did, which I think is one of the more credible things, is just, you know, take my testimony. If you look, I don't remember which one it was, but it was a science fiction by Ann Ramp. I don't remember which one it was. I could look it up. I'll see if I can find the novel by Ann Ramp. Let's see what the novels by Ann Ramp, or I'll type it into my computer, novels by Ann Ramp. Oh, it was Anthem, I think. Anyway, she ripped off Eve G. Wells. You know the scene in um, Time Traveler where the, he comes across dusty books, you know, in the library. I mean, you come across, um, like, Gandalf blows the dust off of something in the minds of Moria and begins reading, you know. Everybody has this sacred book that's lost to time and space. You know, the, 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 the sacred truth of the issue that has been covered by mal detractors, you know, like Anthem, you know, Anthem, oh, the dust of, the truth of human identity released from the slave, hor hor sadnesses of slavery and oppression. 
you know, everybody has that kind of um, uh, sacred document, you know what I'm saying? And um, they're just playing fast and loose with some kind of weed. You know, that they, they think, you know, it's this revealed truth or something, when it's just a sickening license that they've given themselves to do hell on earth to innocent people. It's just, it's cruel and it's stupid, but it's really characteristic of that odious woman, Yoko Ono. I mean, the way that she, her mercenary digging for um, slander and so on. You know, they talk about compromatat and J. Edgar Hoover um, making um, licentious films of Martin Luther King. Who do you think was laughing? If not Yoko Ono and her craven little flock. You know, those are the people who you supposedly you think were liberating us. You know, so I don't know, you know, where the town of Seattle thinks it's going. You know, Pittsburgh and stuff. You know, those people don't seem to have the capacity to back off from acts of sadism. It's abnormal. Can't you see how abnormal it is? And I haven't done anything, you know, to warrant including me in such a conception of, of, of cruelty and malice. You know, I went after the people who did it and just behaved normally. You know, when you have a girlfriend, you sleep with them. You know, I mean, what, what's, what are these people making tapes for? You know, so, yeah, and, they, and, and then while they're hunting, publicly hunting somebody and ridiculing them and subjecting them to serial rejection because they want to laugh at a neuroplasm that they implanted. And then they say, I don't deserve any credit. I don't deserve any credit. Well, then, what do they, would they so, you know, they, they talk about, well, put you in a halfway house, is what Pittsburgh used to call recovery centers. And you can, just go vegetate with people who don't have much going for them. Well, they're, they're, they're sweethearts. There's nothing, I don't have anything against them. You know, at least most of the people in Tassett seem to be. I mean, the way that the Emerald House was infiltrated by really, really vicious weirdos is different. You know, but that doesn't mean I'm, I'm uh, in a position to defend myself if somebody's going to start poisoning again, you know, I mean, it's just crazy. And there's no investigation of it. You know, I, I, I said, you know, you, this gang has been threatening to kill somebody and then they did kill somebody and they blamed me for getting angry. You know, what, uh, let me see. When an innocent person gets killed after you warn that a, the, a crowd, a gang of people were Look, like practicing sacrificialism, and it happens right outside the clubhouse. And you become angry, it's because you are a coward who brought it upon yourself in order to learn from it. So I'm a coward who brought the murder of an innocent person on myself to learn from it, like Cersei Kennedy, her murder. I, 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 I brought that upon myself to learn from it because I'm a coward. I mean, they somehow they, they have it wired up. So that has meaning to them. That's just a Seattle administration facility. They have it all wired up so that it makes sense to them. It makes perfect sense to them to operate by appearances behind the scene, like a little deception glee club party, isn't that right? Steve Tiny is part of a deception glee club party. He's he's extra smart. 
they know perfectly well that I had done nothing of the kind, but we'll do it anyway because we can make it look. And it's a Hollywood bit. Constructing a persona is their own words for what they did. They don't care what's true. Smush what's true. And we'll construct a persona. Isn't that darling? I don't understand how anybody can fall for such a cheap trick when it's so brazen. And they don't even investigate. So I, I, I deserve some credit. That's my opinion. I admit that I have low credibility because I'm deaf. And I didn't learn because I'm deaf things that people who could hear more, they could hear the lectures. They could fall asleep in class and hear the teacher talking about Europe and Western civilization and pick up languages and go to Harvard and these kinds of things. I was denied. I had to wash dishes. You know, so, you know, they went, but there was a, we put, we, we didn't just put an eye in the pyramid on our money. We didn't just put a poor person on our money. We put, don't tread on me on our money. You don't just walk on somebody because they're disabled and then call yourselves all big and say, he's playing all big because he wanted to substantiate his research by going back to school. Now, do you think I wanted to go back to school? I, I once wanted to do my research and find people who had peer review capacity, but I had to go back to school to escape being locked up. Locked up by what? But locked up by people who were slashing innocent people over money and then bashing with basketballs and break, nearly breaking the glasses of somebody who had tried to stop it. Because he's a coward who brought it on himself to learn from it. I brought it on myself. I didn't even know who she was. They picked her out and slashed her in front of the clubhouse. And I'm not supposed to get angry. What am I supposed to do? Gee, that's interesting. Would you, you W dialectical, please de deposit um, an explanation into the um, American framework so that we can all be overwhelmed with the overwhelming factuality of their dialectical principles could could uw dialectical in the state of israel please unmask the secret and show us the truth of 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 of, 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 of marxism even that might be at work or of um charles murray's losing ground that might be at work i mean something to make clear how a penny Slashing a girl over a penny is a masterstroke of ingenuity and insight into the cosmic consciousness of global renewal. Yes, it must be it must be global renewal.